right. Hi, guys. We are live, and I can see the numbers ticking up here. So I'm going to just wait a few minutes and let everybody into the webinar. Greetings, everybody. Happy, I think it's Thursday. Thursday. August 20th. Thursday. Right. Hard to tell anymore which day of the week it is. <laughs> they all run together, particularly in the summer. It's been nice and not humid here in D.C., which is good. Right, we are still going a couple days. Three years. I, uh, just a few I days. I say the same. Vince, where are Florida? you located, Vince? In uh, Naples, Florida. Yeah, it's 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 humid here. <laughs> very very yeah. humid. But you don't get a break in the sun. Uh, right? No, no, no. Although I did notice it's starting to get a little more mild. But yeah. But um, we have a actually very pretty week here um, in DC. But I hear the ninety degree humidity is coming back. Mm. All right, well, it looks like we are leveling off on attendees. People are still trickling in, but I know we have a lot to get through today, so I'm gonna get us started. Welcome everybody to session three of our three-part series on building your online presence. This is Think Like a Recruiter, what you need to know to get the attention of the big brands. And as with all of our past sessions, you are joined today by myself, McLean Robbins, and uh, Amy O'Donnell, who is MBO's Chief Talent Officer. Um, we are in for a real treat today. We have uh, been joined by Vince Valley, who is uh, with KPMG as our special guest. So Amy, I'm gonna kick it over so you can give Vince a warm and proper introduction. Sure, I am very uh, excited to have Vince join us today. I've been bothering him for a couple months about doing one of these with me. And uh, Vince is the Associate Director of independent contractor recruiting for KPMG. And he runs a program there, um, last several years, Vince, right? Almost four now? Uh, about, yeah, three and a half, yep. yeah. Yeah, uh, that is focused on direct sourcing for independent contractors. So I'm sure our audience will understand why this is a great special guest for this series. Um, but Vince not only has done that with KPMG, but also has a really vast career in recruiting in general and is going to share some insights and tips with us around that. And then I guess the last thing I'll give you for Vince is your team at KPMG and your program is one of the most successful we've seen. Um, you guys really uh, are running this really well, know what you're doing, and I'm, in, I'm so happy that you are, are joining us today. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about um, your program there, and, and how did you get involved with that initially? Well, I, I, originally, you know, I've been with KPMG for, for over 13 years now, um, supporting what we uh, call our advisory practice, mm -hmm. and about three and a half years ago, um, it came up that we were going to be piloting a contingent workforce um, within the firm and give it a try. And the idea is that, you know, we have recruiters that, that know the skill sets we're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, we work with a lot of third parties, have great relationships with them, and they are still valuable. However, we probably could, could uh, work yeah. with independent contractors, look for them ourselves. And so that's, I raised my hand. I said, hey, I, this sounds interesting. I'd like to help out. That's, that's how it started. And, and before you knew it, you were building it and running yeah. it. And yes. you actually have a, a great background for that because you had had some experience earlier in your career in the contingent space. So you kind of understood yep. Both yep. Of that full-time side, the firm of KPMG and the contingent. So what does your team consist of today? Share a little bit about that because I think it's pretty right. complex. Right now, we, we have uh, four full-time recruiters dedicated to, to contingent staffing. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a highly, a really a highly trained uh, team offshore, a couple teams uh, that help us as well. I actually trained them myself. Wow. Um, and so together we, um, we uh, support the, uh, the contingent space. Yeah. And you guys have a really good partnership between your sources and your recruiters that really, I think, helps round out that whole yeah, program. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, um, McLean, do you I'm want gonna, to jump in? Yeah, to I'm going to jump in. I'm going to pause really quickly. Um, I got so excited that we had Vince joining us that I forgot to tell people about the webinar controls. Oh. Um, and, so, <laughs> and, and, uh, and what we're doing here today. So uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, this is part three of our branding series. 
Uh, we will, when we send out the recording of this webinar, yes, you will get a recording. Um, we will send out links to parts one and two, where we talked about establishing your online presence and how to grow beyond your network. Um, this is part of a regular series of events that we have here, all virtual now uh, due to the pandemic. Um, and you can always find our upcoming events on mbopartners.com slash events. For those of you, I think most of you are very familiar with MBO Partners. We are a platform that connects independent professionals and enterprise organizations. Um, and Vince at, with KPMG is one of our wonderful client partners here. And we have been in this business for more than 20 years. So uh, we are really, really excited to talk to you guys about the growing independent contractor space and the future of work. We know many of you are now considering independent contracting for the first time and many of you have been with us and MBO or in the independent contracting space for decades. We specialize in highly skilled independent professionals. So I think you guys are going to learn a lot today. Please put your questions in the chat. Um, actually use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We will answer questions throughout and then reserve a good dedicated bit at the end. But for now, I'm going to fire questions at both Amy and Vince. It's like Jeopardy, but the lightning round. Oh. Um, this is very, very exciting. So my very first question for you guys both, um, and Vince, I'll ask you to start, is how can independent ta talent tell if the organization is open to hiring ICs? How, how do I know this if they have a program? You know, one of the things that I, I tell folks is to, and most of you probably do this, look online, OK? You can, you can do a Google search easily. Uh, it's that simple. However, you might want to go a little deeper, okay? I'll share a secret with you. When, when recruiters are looking for folks um, to hire, okay, and I'm talking about full-time, um, we will actually search to see what companies are hiring those types of, of candidates. And we'll, we will go after, no, I should, it's terrible, I shouldn't say go after, but we will oh. pursue them. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, a good word. And especially, you know, especially folks in the same uh, industry as us. So, mm -hmm. so look to see who's, who's hiring. And, uh, you know, to add to that, you know, look, look in your networks and see who, who's, who you know that might work at those, at those locations, at mm -hmm. those companies. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, honestly, I, I see a lot of, I follow a lot of professional forums for recruiting, and I see a lot of people actually um, looking in there for, for contractors. So any professional forums that pertain to your skill set and your profession um, mm -hmm. and uh, should probably have those, those, types of, uh, those types of things. That's really interesting. So I'm hearing that there's not any one place, starting with the company's website, looking really skills-based is, is good. Mm -hmm. And Amy, what about you? You're seeing a lot of this in the market as we speak with our client organizations. Yeah, um, I think one of the things that is very positive is we're seeing more and more clients put um, a pathway on their careers website for direct sourcing and independent contractors. So they already have all of that information out there for their full-time staff. And now there's some buttons out there to say, are you interested in project work? And so keep that in mind and keep looking at those career pages. And um, we also are seeing people go, especially this year, back and forth from full-time to contract to maybe back to full-time. So those worlds are starting to blend. Excellent. Another thing um, that that uh, does occur, it, there, there are a lot of, uh, and again, some of you may experience this, there's a close-knit community in, in terms of the contracting community. And in certain mm -hmm. fields, folks talk to each other. Right. Um, you know, we could put out uh, an assignment for uh, AML um, investigators and word will spread that we're looking. Um, mm -hmm. So it doesn't hurt to reach out to your network in, in that respect too, uh, and see if, if they know of any uh, any place that they're actually on a gig will is hiring as well. Yeah, and and Vince, you are like reading my mind today. So I'm going to launch a poll here. Um, how and I'm going to ask everybody in the audience, how do you find your independent consulting projects? Obviously, Vince and Amy are going to share a lot of tips for you here, but we'd love to hear from you um, how you're finding. You can vote um, online marketplace, your network, former employers, or other. You pick multiple choices. Would love to hear, and we'll share the results in just a minute. I am going to ask a question now about the job rec or the project requisition. Um, are these accurate? How accurate are you making these recs? And are they really a reflection of what the company is looking for? It, 
I'm sure that that people have noticed sometimes uh, a requisition or, or the description is very general. Okay, that happens, and and you will see that. Um, other times it'll be very specific. Typically, when you see a posting, that is that is the, they're looking for the perfect candidate, but not everything on there is most likely required. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you see something, if you have 75% of what's on there, you should apply. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't always, it, it, when we, something that another secret I'll tell you is that when we sit down and talk to our hiring managers, we'll look at, at the assignment and say, all right, so of what's on here, what do you really, what do you really need? And, you know, and then they will tell us. So we know when we're looking for folks, you know, we know, you know, you know, what will work and what won't. So yeah, a lot, a lot of recs are written to the ideal, yeah. which, which we all understand, but really as recruiters, we have some, you know, descending order in our head of like, we know these three things have to be there. And if the rest of this was theirs, it's great. But if you looked at who fills a certain role compared to the opportunity and, and looked at the skill set comparison, you won't always see a direct match between what was actually advertised in the beginning. Yeah. Though there will be some things, right, Vince, that are core to those roles, and that usually is is out there if that's the case. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That sounds what a little about, like my house hunting. I mean, I'm giving up on certain things, and getting certain things in response. You know what? My what about, very very similar to what you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. You know, I I found eighty percent of what I wanted. So exactly. what about um, for ICs, what I, I'm asking, um, it sounds like the more general the job rec is, uh, or rather the more specific the job rec is, the more the recruiter's like, no, I really know what I want. It's these things and I'll take maybe 80% of it. Mm -hmm. But the more general, I could, I could probably apply to it and fill it a little bit with myself. Or do you think they just maybe don't, don't know until they see? How does, the, how does that work? It, it, some, uh, I, I, I encourage people to apply. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I can say my, my team, we, my team actually, uh, that we post all our, our assignments ourselves. So um, we're really sensitive to the fact that mm -hmm. what's in there um, is what we really want. You know, we're not, you know, we're not uh, hiding anything there. We're not looking for, for if it's in, in our posting, then yeah. it's needed. Yeah, so your your recs are really accurate. Yeah, we because we okay. we because the turnaround time we we have to fill a role, we don't have time we don't have uh, time to um, look at look at all that. You know what I'm saying? So so it, it needs to be really specific. Yeah, I think that's that's great, Amy. Sorry, go ahead. The other thing about Vince's program that I think is is really positive is his recruiters post those recs. So. That's not true in every program, meaning sometimes they're pulling recs from a VMS or whatever, which is fine. It, it handles the volume. But when a recruiter posts their own rec, they, they are pretty good about putting in there the detail of what they're looking for. And that's what you'll find in um, Vince's marketplace. Excellent. And I am going to, I'm going to quickly share poll results and then I'm going to ask a question about your marketplace roles because that they are flooding into the chat here. I'm seeing a lot of questions come in. So we're going to have to definitely reserve time. Um, it looks like 71% of you say that that's your network great. is your top uh, way to get positions. Right. And I think that's, that's what that's we talked fantastic. about in sessions one and two. 36% um, of you are using an online marketplace. Um, Matt, who's our wonderful webinar admin today, will pop the link to the KPMG marketplace into the chat here. So do encourage everybody to sign up there. 19% um, of you through your former employer and 15% other. Um, I'm sure there's a combination thereof, mm -hmm. but I think these are pretty consistent results with what we're seeing. Would you yeah, agree? And it's great to hear that that the, the highest number is your network because that's you know that's a lot of what we're talking about here is the marketplaces help, but that's not going to be the only way. And so working your network also is really important. it's it really is. And, and you know you've already branded yourself with with folks that you've worked for, right? Mm -hmm. Those managers know you, and and that's that's a big deal. I mean that's yeah. you you want to you want to cash cash in on that. Yeah. Wonderful. Tell me a little bit about what uh, what roles are going into the marketplace at KPMG uh, generally. Are there types you do put in and types you don't put in? Yes, um, and and there's there's a couple different couple different types that we put in. Um, sometimes when we're 
and we'll talk about pipelining later, but when we're pipelining, we'll put in a more general um, uh, request or, or a community posting mm -hmm. type thing. So we know that we're going to have opportunities coming up. We're, we're looking to build our, our pool in that specific area. So if it's um, Oracle HCM implementation, whatever it is, then there are specific ones and they're very specific. Okay. We, we, you will know when you look at, at our postings, what is a community, what is for upcoming assignments? Cause we, we will communicate that clearly. And um, what is a specific assignment with a, a specific date um, start date and, and so forth. Um, sometimes something I wanted to mention, sometimes there is no, no wreck. Okay. Sometimes we, it's just a, a matter of us going in and searching our talent pool. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and what that means is you want to make sure that your profile is up to date, um, that, that you do have uh, a profile with us. Um, and you're, you know, it's, it's easy to find proper keywords and so forth because, um, sometimes it's a smaller position. Maybe it's, yeah. you know, it's a developer position and, yeah. you know, we'll Vince, go in. Do, and you have, do you ever have it where managers sometimes I've found are thinking about how they're going to staff a project and it's a combination of full-time and contract. And sometimes the answer to that might be what's there. So, mm -hmm. so there might yeah. not be a rack. They might come to your team and say, do you think we could find people like this? That's, so you have people like that. that that's a great point. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I yeah. think that because they can do a combination of how th that staffing happens and some of it, the managers will base on what's in the market. And, and on the, I'm glad you said that because some, what happens a lot is the team will come to us and say, Hey, you know, we're going to bid on some work. What does mm -hmm. our pool look like for, um, you know, cyber response? Yeah. And, and we may have to put, you know, put word out and say, Hey, who's, who's available just mm -hmm. in case, you know, it doesn't always go through, right. you know, but, but we will do that. We'll reach out to, to our pool and find out who's available. Yeah, I think that, exactly. that pool concept is one that I just want to hit. We've talked about it in the first two sessions, Vince, but it's, it is a concept that for me was new when I started with MBO. Mm -hmm. So can you describe what a talent pool is for you? What, what a bench means and, and how common it is and, and what maybe even skills you're actively benching for now? So in, in recruiting um, f forever, um, building talent pools has uh, has been uh, an objective. So you want to, uh, especially for full time, you want to build a pool of folks that might be interested in in making a change and coming to your to your company. In in uh, contracting, it's 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 even more real. We our goal, and, and one of the reasons we we partnered with with MBO is because we want to we want to build our own internal pools of folks that are interested in, in assignments at KPMG have the specific skill sets we're looking for. So mm -hmm. we will, for example, um, uh, again, going to the, the uh, we have a lot of Oracle needs, uh, implementation needs. So a member of my team is building a sp specific pools for uh, Oracle HCM imp implementation. It could be uh, anything along those lines so that when an opportunity comes up, we're going to, we're gonna reach out to that pool specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's how we work it. And, it. and it's very successful. We actually um, had an opportunity come up where we needed um, uh, 70 uh, contractors yeah, uh, for an assignment. A, this was pretty impressive, Vince. And, and we were able to turn around and meet the, meet the need of these folks within, uh, within three to four days. Yeah, um, that's huge. And, and, and had you quick. not had you not had a talent pool already, and the people pre-identified that you kind of knew in the U.S. Right. Right. where is this talent, you wouldn't have been able to respond, and KPMG right. might not get that project. So right. that that's the reason for it. Um, and I think it's it has been common in recruiting. And the one thing I wanted to mention about your program too is your recs specify that. So the talent knows when they are responding mm -hmm. to a talent pooling rack, meaning we're anticipating a need for this, right? Coming up right, right. versus you can see recs in there as well that are clear. We need this, you know, yesterday. Mm -hmm. so you'll be, the talent will be able to tell. Yeah. And yes. you're sa it says talent pool or future opportunity. I mean, I yes. think it's pretty, pretty clear. Right. right. But I want to ask, so what happens if I, 
do I get an interview for these talent pooling recs? Do you talk to these people? And and what what happens from there if there's an interview for something that's not necessarily, I'm not going to call it not a real job, but a future yeah. opportunity? It, it, you know, it, it depends on on whether we're pipelining or whether there's a specific assignment. And sometimes there's a little bit of a hybrid there, and I'll explain that. So if we're pipelining and, and we're building a pool of interested candidates, we're, we're most likely not going to reach out to everybody, um, especially if there's, you know, 200, 300, sometimes up to 1,000 interested candidates or, or responses, right? Um, but if we know that we have opportunities coming up, you know, maybe three to four months down the road, uh, and we know that it is going to happen, we're, you know, members of my team will reach out and start mm -hmm. touching base with people, verifying skill sets, verifying availability and interest, um, and, and maybe even setting up pre-interviews um, mm -hmm. with with our team. So for example, um, earlier in the year, we had uh, several Oracle opportunities coming up and we approached our, our Oracle practice and said, hey, would you be open to uh, pre-screening folks so that when you have these opportunities come up, you know who you want, okay? And that's what we did. And we were able to, again, turn around within zero to 24 hours candidates for the team that they they already knew. So that's right. also part of pipelining. There's different types of pipelining, and that's that's part of what we do as well. And, and you know what else I think is beneficial in that is that it also gives you insight into what you don't have. So yes. if you start to aggregate people into talent pools where you know you're going to have future need, it becomes glaringly obvious a certain practice yes and you don't have enough people in a pool then you know where you need to put your efforts right right and and as we expand this throughout kpmg we're going to be looking for more and more different skill sets help desk mm -hmm. cyber response whatever whatever it is and in different practice areas so it's it's um it, it you know pipelining is essential yeah and i'll ask that that question of hot hot skills. I, it's coming into the chat a lot here. So um, I'll pause and just say it. You're saying Oracle, cyber response, help desk. Are there are there skills right now that just are popping up either across your current open recs frequently for KPMG or that you know you're really pooling for just so that people who are attending can get that yeah. early scoop? Uh, you know, the the right now, the most popular and, and what I see coming up, what we see is um, uh, AML, anti-money laundering investigation. Um, we uh, IT audit and internal audit. Um, Oracle, you know, I say Oracle everything, but yeah. but we need technical and and functional Oracle. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, um, SAP. We see, and we're seeing area. a lot of infrastructure. And yes. Ops, um, Developers. Management. Yep. Yeah. Seeing a lot of that. Not not so much more project management. Mm -hmm. um, in a, a bunch of different areas, um, involving all those areas. Um, yeah. And I think, so it, as we have talked about in the past, COVID has, I think, up to that need some. We're all yes. working remotely. People are, we're hearing more and more from workforces that they're going to continue on and mm -hmm. be questions. And so all of the tools related to all of that in technology, um, I think, is going to continue to have you know, we're going to continue to see needs there. Yeah. The other one, Vince, that um, is completely different than technology, but you see, like, you just had the contract reviewers, like, mm -hmm. that, you know, so there are roles outside of technology, too, that you see. Yeah, and then absolutely. I, um, AML, which is anti-money uh, laundering, is that another group of um, need that you see coming up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's AML is definitely an area that, and we've we've done work in this area before, and and again, you know, you know, roundabout related to to COVID. I mean, there's there's things coming up that um, are going to require those types of skill sets. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something I you know I definitely see coming up. Yeah, and I would ask the question of a lot of these skills are really technical or very very specific nuanced skill sets. What's the balance, at least, of what you're pooling for now of that really technical versus the more non-technical general strategy management consulting background? Or do you just need both at different times? It, it's, it, I would say we do have a lot, lot more demand for technical, but, but it also depends on, on where a business is focusing you know, their services. So, so for right. us, you know, internal audit and IT audit, the AML, the ML piece, um, you know, compliance, risk and compliance, 
um, that, that sort of thing. Um, but we also have needs uh, externally and internally for um, developers, you know, a lot of cloud uh, related skills, uh, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Perfect. Right. So with all the technologies lot, moving in that direction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I am getting, uh, the questions are flooding in, which is great. <laughs> Love to see it. Um, I am getting a lot of questions about what happens when a recruiter decides to just reach out to someone. What is making people stand out? And Amy, I will, we'll put it in the, the follow-up email. We yeah. talked a lot about, you know, how to make your LinkedIn profile, how to make your resume stand out in our previous sessions. But Vince, I'd love to know on, you know, how do I make the short list? What stands out to, to you and to other recruiters? And I think you actually pulled some recruiters on this one, right? You know, interestingly, I, I uh, actually spoke to uh, 15 recruiters on my team. Amazing. Uh, Thank you for doing that. Firm. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and they're all recruiters that I, you know, who's, who's, um, who I really respect. And I said, listen, talk to me about, about what it is you look for. And honestly, the, the, um, and I have my list here. That's why I'm looking off to the left. Mm -hmm. um, it, it all, they all came back very similar. Um, and Amy and I have talked about this before yeah. too. It, it, oh, you know, if I was to say it in one sentence, a clear indication of your skill set, okay, and and how that relates to to the job description, okay. That's that's what recruiters are looking for. We look at a lot of resumes, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so if within the first 30 seconds that uh, we don't see the keywords and an indication of, of that expertise, we're, we're not going to continue. Um, something I like to tell people uh, is, you know, if you were to look for yourself, but let's say you were looking for someone to work with you with the mm -hmm. same skill set, what would you look for, right? How would you, how would it look in, in a resume? Um, and so that's, that's a, a, a big a big key there. Your skill sets have to stand out, and the most recent skill sets should be, um, you know, your, the skill sets that relate to the current role should be recent um, right. as well, and be easy to find, right? Yes, right. right. And I think one of the the tips that Vince was reading off to us that I thought was actually a great point from his recruiters was on a resume they prefer that people go, you know, kind of chronological with their titles and yes. underneath yeah. what they did versus sometimes people will list all their skills and then, it, then they'll list like five employers and the dates. We can't tell when you did those things that are in the skills list. Yeah, so break it up. recently they occurred, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's huge. Yeah, because the recency matters a lot. And, and you really don't want us calling you about something you did 30 years ago anyway like it's you know <laughs> it's good for both of us <laughs> and and sometimes you know and i know people are saying well you know some people may say well you know what it works for my resume there are mm -hmm. cases there are in instances where it does work and it might be a very very technical resume sure it, it depends but mm -hmm. but normally for it should be easy for someone's eyes to to move down uh, and find those those uh skill mm -hmm. sets i something that um if I find a resume that's, you know, maybe four or five, six pages, um, and I think to myself, all right, that's long. Let me, let me see, let me, let me just do a control F and see if I can find some of the, oh, yeah. I the love mandatory that keywords. And if I don't find AML in the resume, I'm probably not going to look at it. Or if you find it on page five. Right. Right. But, but actually right. Vince brought up this tip and I forgot that I, we even do this and I do it all the time. You get a resume back from a search and there's a lot of stuff on it. So we do a control fine for what mm -hmm. we're looking for. All of you in your, you know, the skill areas that you want to get project work in, and practice that on your own resume and see how you come up. You know, when there's a that's, job rack out. That's a great tip. Yeah, see some of the keywords in the job rack and how that, that'll tell you really quickly how your resume is stacking up to that. Um, but you can do that yourself. A lot of us recruiters do that a lot. And uh, something I do want to mention too, we, it's not that we don't, we don't care to look at a resume. It, there, sometimes for a role, you'll, you'll receive hundreds of, of responses, mm -hmm. right? Those responses, you no, know, it's, it's has to do with the technology, right? Mm -hmm. We have technology that allows us to look at several resumes at once. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Okay, we can use Boolean search strings. We and it's all based on keywords. It's all based yes. on ski, keywords and skill sets. And I'll I will go in and do a search based on keywords and those resumes that come up. I'm going to look at first. Mm-hmm. So in order for them to come up, it it has to be very relatable to the job description. Yeah, you're stealing my lightning round questions, Ben. Oh. Here, and <laughs> I, I, I want to jump a little into excited, that because you guys have been discussing <laughs> some really meaty topics here, and I just want to—I want to make sure that I get you know a lot of these top tips hit. So that's actually the first one I've got, which is you're telling me that you're using Boolean search, you're using AI, you're using automated mm-hmm. programs, and if yes. I don't have keywords up front and center, I'm not going to get it. So is that myth? Thirty seconds or less on a resume, true, or is it more like? no seconds if you don't have the right keywords. Both of you, quick answer. I mean, I'm less than 30 for me. I, I scan stuff really quickly and probably within 10 to 15 seconds, I'm not seeing in the first quarter of the resume, you know, what I'm looking for. I, I will say also from a, if I see it in the last five years, you've been doing something completely different than what I'm looking for. I'm right. probably moving on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If it's, if, if it's in the, the first part of the resume, right, and it's clearly stated in the summary, uh, and I get a, a confident vibe that, that you have the skill set, I'm going to continue. Mm-hmm. All right. What stands out most? What gives you the confident vibe? Both of you will start with this. You know, again, it, it does. It, what stands out is, is um, a resume that's easy to read and that's clear, OK? Um, Easily, you know, the bullet um, summaries, a nice uh, summary and bullets that I can scan easily. Um, no graphics, no charts, uh, no, anything like that. Just um, a clear indication, again, a very clear indication of, of your skill set. Yeah, okay. Vince and I are so like minded because that <laughs> resume that I popped up, I think it was in the first session. We, the first session, and what we just shared ex- in the chat. Yeah, w- which was exactly what Vince just described. I'm like, give me a heading, a you know, couple line summary that is readable, not too many, you know, big words and things that I have to really think hard about to understand, and give me some bullets of what the type of work you want to do. So I think that's what stands out: the clarity. Um, if everything's all crammed together and it just looks like a document that nobody really wants to pick up or it looks like a contract because there's so much stuff on there and I have a hundred resumes to go through, I'm going to probably go to the next one. What about LinkedIn versus the resume? At what point, if at all, do you get to LinkedIn and how do you weigh it vis-a-vis the resume? Um, Amy, why don't I start with you on that one? Because we've talked a lot about LinkedIn. Yeah. um, Well, it depends on whether I have your resume. So, if the path that we're going on, that I have your resume and I got intrigued by the resume, then I go to LinkedIn to kind of see activity, you know, then, then my thought process is how active are they in this world or any of that. Um, sometimes we don't have a resume and we're actually searching LinkedIn. So when LinkedIn is really important from that standpoint is if I'm searching on LinkedIn, make sure that you have enough data in there that it do- doesn't just say consultant or something so that I can find you there. That's big. What about you, Vince? Are you mainly searching your database? Or are you going to LinkedIn as well? And when? We, we use a lot of resources. Mm-hmm. Um, my team will, will utilize, uh, they will utilize LinkedIn. Um, it is it is a, a good tool. Mm-hmm. Um, we also search um, in different uh, forums and, uh, and online too. Again, Boolean searches just based on the internet. But, um, but you know, something I, I do like to see on, on sometimes you know folks can attach their resume to their LinkedIn profile. You know, make sure you're not putting personal information in there. But mm-hmm. uh, but you you know that's also helpful because if we don't have it on file and we're searching, we have it right there and we mm-hmm. can we can email you. Oh, um, that's, so that's, that's right. yeah job. yeah or 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 you know if if it's basically if it's the same thing you have on your resume on LinkedIn. Um, that's that's great. I mean, that's, yeah, that's it can also be fine. the same. That's right. fine. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's wonderful. Um, and that question came in from Eddie Dunn, who I know has been working with several clients in our network. Um, I'm going to ask a tangential question that he's got in here, and then jump back to resumes. Uh, what about referrals? We saw 70% of people using their network. How much do you factor that referral in vis-a-vis somebody you just found online, Vince? 
we that, that's a big deal for us. Um, and I'll, I'll use an example uh, in our AML space. Um, you know, our team, my, uh, one of my recruiters is working in that space and we interviewed somebody, placed them on an assignment. And once they were placed, they said, hey, listen, I have three more people that are open to opportunities. Do you, you know, and because they were doing so well, you know, we, we looked at, uh, at their referrals mm -hmm. and um, it, recruiters always welcome referrals. Absolutely. Yes, especially and, and from, from folks that they, uh, they you trust. know, that they know, that they trust. Yeah, absolutely. And that they've had a good, they've had a good experience with. Um, right. I mean, I think still what hasn't changed in recruiting is referrals from a retention and a quality standpoint are usually your best um, hires and, you know, candidates that you bring in if you bring, because mm -hmm. because that referral also knows the other person might like your environment. Yes. Yeah, more absolutely. to it than just the skills. They'd be a, they'd be a culture fit, and yes, right. absolutely. Well, and not to toot our own horn, but we've got a hundred plus, one hundred and fifty plus of you guys on the line today. And I think one of the things that I'm I, I think is so interesting is because MBO's concentration is all this high skilled professional. We're a we're a network of of self sustaining mm -hmm. referrals. They're all people who've worked with major firms in the past. They, right. they know what it takes. So um, you guys are in a pretty elite group uh which which helps uh, we've talked a lot about what makes a good resume but i have to ask what makes you just run for the hills what are the biggest mistakes people are making that you say oh i wish they weren't doing that one of the first things that popped up on my survey from one of the recruiters was 13 to 15 page resumes and i you know <laughs> and i know she was i know she was joking but she really wasn't yeah <laughs> Um, I for every year I've worked. I mean, it's, you know, if, if it's, there's a couple of things. If it's too long, you know, we're, we're, we're only going to read for the most pertinent information. Mm -hmm. um, but also sometimes um, resumes may have a lot of detail, but they may not, you, know, you may get done reading the resume and still not know what, what this person does. Yeah. Right. It, and I agree on that one. Yeah. I, I yeah. really yeah. hate when I read a resume, even if I take my 30 seconds to read it, and I'm trying to, at the end of it, I'm like, I don't know what they do. I read words, and I see things on here, and I see interesting companies, but how would I use you? If I have to ask myself that question, I'm probably not going to work too hard at that. That document needs to serve up to me how I would use you. And, and you know, it's helpful you know, you can list referrals and, and other things. If you reduce the unnecessary information, mm -hmm. that's also helpful. Now, if if links to portfolios and things like that are relevant to what you're doing, if it's, uh, you know, a developer role or, you know, you think links would be helpful for their hiring manager to see, absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah, especially depending on the occupation. But if you have a portfolio, if you're a designer and you, you know, managers right. expect to see a portfolio before they even look at a resume. So right. depending right. on your occupation, add in that kind of stuff with a link, that's really helpful. Right. Yeah, and that's that's great. I had a couple questions in the chat saying, what can I put my links in? Um, are there anything specifically, Vince, that you look for now that you're more on the IC side than the FTE side that you say, this is what makes an IC resume stand out that I wouldn't have necessarily put uh, on a full-time employee's resume? You know, it's it's going to sound pretty obvious, but the fact that that you are an independent contractor, yeah, um, we are we are looking in resources that have full time folks as well. Mm -hmm. and um, it's all blending, right? It's all blended, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Indicating and and again, I will do a search. Literally, I, I have a, a search string that I use. That's um, basically how uh, the term would come up: independent recruiter. Um, anything like that, you know, mm -hmm. sole proprietor. So I'll look for those those terms. So uh, an indication of that is really helpful. And and Vince, you saying it's obvious. Um, I actually would have thought that too. And we're doing tons of resume review in my group, and I'm surprised by how few people put on their resume that they actually have their own firm or they're an independent contractor. So I do think it's important. I, I agree because sometimes that's the keyword search that you're doing. Yes. Right. Absolutely. So there's no negative then if I'm McLean Robbins LLC or or you know McLean not, Robbins. Not to be No, no, <laughs> that's like that's, that's, that's what, right. I'm, what I'm hearing is is <laughs> give myself a name and, and indicate right. that. And I know LinkedIn has the new feature. 
it's an independent role. It's full time. It's part time too. So I would think and, you could use yeah. that. And you can indicate so, that in your LinkedIn profile as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we know yeah, that when we look in marketplace, we know that that that's you know those are folks that are looking for contract assignments. When we look externally, right. you know, and that's you know in terms of finding finding business, right? In in terms of branding yourself externally, you know, folks outside of MBO. Um, need to know that you're a contractor. Yeah, and on LinkedIn, sometimes you might have had your own business for 12 years, but you can't tell. You might look exactly like another consultant that has worked full time, you know, for KPMG or Accenture or something. That's that's huge. So I've I've gotten through the screening process. I'm ready to go here. What makes me stand out? Um, and how do I close the deal? Like what, what happens after the interview? As a, as, a, uh, as a person, what what should I do after I've had that interview and I'm waiting to hear back? Is there any sort of tip there from a recruiter? Yeah, what are your tips, Vince? What do you think about candidates following up? You know, up? It, it's, it's really, you know, you may think that, that you're, you're bothering a recruiter by following up, but, but following up, um, at least within, you know, I, I would say 24 hours mm -hmm. just to see how it went. Sometimes it takes a little longer. And, and I know yeah. sometimes that can be a little frustrating because in certain cases, depending on the skill level required and the number of people required, it, it may take a little longer. You know, I always think it's great too to ask the recruiter as you are interviewing, where are they in their interview process? Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it just yep. doesn't occur to them maybe to tell you, but they'll tell you, hey, you're my first. There's right. 10 more to go. That helps to set your expectation or, oh, we, you know, we need to make a decision next week. Yeah. So I think it's okay to ask that. That's a good, that's a good point. And what about for the next assignment? You know, I, we, I know we send a message to people before they roll off a project, like you're, you, you might want to start looking for your next project now. What's yeah. that tip if, if I'm already working through KPMG to just get the next role? Any best practices there? Do I go back to the recruiter? Do I stick with the person I was working with on the role? How does that work? Actually, actually all of that. Um, <laughs> Every what I, what I see is that is really successful is that um, uh, successful contractors have a list, you know, and everyone mentioned that they use their network, right? They use, have a list of folks that they want to let know that they're rolling off yeah. and, and blast it out. And that is managers you've worked for in the past at any firm, you know, folks that, that are fellow contractors that might know of opportunities, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's the really, that's the, that's the important thing. And I, I think that's probably based on that answer. That's probably what, what people do. Perfect. Yeah. Well, and I think that's kind of what we covered in the last series, but that, you know, one of the things and Vince is validating this, you know, build your, your contact list of people that you, you build it once and add to it, but then it's really easy when you're rolling off 30 days, two weeks, whatever, to do some type of update to a community that you've gotten projects with in the past. And so if you have that ready to go, even when you're really busy, it's, it's an easy, quick thing to do. That's excellent. And again, you're going to your network, you're going to your community. So that's, mm -hmm. that's perfect. I want to make sure we're, we've got about a little less than 20 minutes left. Um, so a couple of questions coming in. Are you guys okay if I jump to the chat? Sure. All right. Wonderful. Um, I've seen a couple questions here of, you know, I applied and didn't hear back. And again, Amy, I think we talked about this in, in yeah. first sessions. I don't think that's unique to MBO's platform. Um, you know, as you say, two, 300 people apply for a role. Uh, what is your process on Vince getting back to people and, and what percentage of people just realistically can you get back to? It, it's, it is difficult um, when you're receiving hundreds of resumes, which, which we do, or responses, mm -hmm. it is difficult um, to reply to everybody. Um, and uh, typically if, if you've spoken to someone about an opportunity, you know, there, you should expect to hear back and you mm -hmm. should follow up. Sometimes, um, you know, in, in some instances, you know, folks, you know, I, I'm not referring to KPMG, but, but some people may be putting feelers out to see who's available. Okay. Yeah. They, they may not, they may not respond uh, because, you know, because of that. I think that's a and, good and thing. you know, and, and vice versa, one thing I will say too, and I'm sure it's not for the candidates on, on this uh, webinar, but 
I can't believe how many times I've reached out to people who applied to a job or even have open to opportunities or whatever, and they don't call me back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've had people apply. And I'm like, wait a minute, why did they apply if, but you know, so I think what I've said to that too is set your expectation that you might not always hear back. It's not always negative or positive. Sometimes it's just right, the right. industry of what we the volume we have it, and, and move on. The silence isn't saying something about, about your background. Right. Something exactly. else, you know, something else I tell folks when I'm, I'm doing career coaching is that you, you don't sit back and wait for people to get back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those of you who are really experienced and, and, you know, uh, are able to get a lot of, of business that's, you know, you probably know, you know that, that. Yeah. but, but, you know, go out and, and find, go out and find these people, you know, go mm -hmm. out and, and there are ways, you know, there are ways to find contact information, email addresses, right. um, you know, be, be proactive. I think that's, that's who the proactivity and, and I'm seeing some things come in the chat here of, you know, sort of what, what's that tip? I, I always say to people, don't get discouraged. You know, you mm -hmm. went on a lot of dates before you met your partner. You looked yeah. at a lot of houses before you bought that house. You're going to mm -hmm. look at a lot of positions. Um, yeah. and, and part of being a successful consultant is having a little bit of a tough skin, knowing you're not going to get everything you apply for. Mm -hmm. um, when I, when and, I, and you may oh, not even apply to get something. When, when I was in between roles um, some time ago, I kept a list of, of companies that I was applying to. And mm -hmm. I knew that the, it was going to be the 10% rule. I knew that I was only going to get a uh, 10% response to all the companies, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. that, that was my expectation and I knew it. And, and I targeted companies that I wanted to work for. So I, I actually had, you know, maybe it helps being a recruiter, but I had a spreadsheet with the name of the company and, and who I was targeting mm -hmm. uh, in terms of outreach, you know, who the director of recruiting was, who, you yeah. know, whatever. And um, so I was, much more specific, you know, I did reach out and apply, but then I went deeper and reached out to individuals through LinkedIn, uh, through articles, maybe they have people had written online yeah. um, that that provided their email address. So so I, I went a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. That's great. You had a lot of on ingenuity there and, and yeah, Vin, that's an interesting baseline too. I think let me add one place. tip that Vince had mentioned to me this week. Um, get, when you're, any projects you are working on, on, make sure you have the email addresses and keep them of the hiring managers and people in the firm that you've interacted and worked with because going to recruiting is great but also going to the business when you're available yeah you know, one of those managers yeah. might have a need um, and that happens a lot yeah that happens does. a lot we have we have managers or, uh, come to us and say i have an opportunity you know i, I have a contract role coming up i'd like to bring so and so back mm -hmm. you know and and you know, that, that's, that's great. And Vince, don't you think I've had it happen too, where they hadn't thought of that person mm -hmm. they were so busy with so many things. They hadn't really thought of it. And then somebody pings them and they're like, Oh, wait, mm -hmm. maybe they can help me solve this problem. So right. Right. projects do come from that. That's why you should reach out to them because they may not even know that they have a need, like you were saying, <laughs> until until someone con until someone yeah. does contact them it's that's exactly it does happen too yeah sure i think that's that's a really interesting point too i it, we're, the theme that i'm hearing is sort of clarity in what you offer knowing who you are what you're good at and then proactivity to drive mm -hmm. that conversation mm -hmm. and using your network be it somebody you've worked with in the past or, mm -hmm. or how to get to a recruiter yep. a couple of just logistical questions vince that are, are a little kpmg specific do you use globally the same consultant databases or do you have a separate platform for Europe versus the United States? We have, we have a separate platform um, for, uh, for that. We, we have a, you know, the U S site and then we have member firms throughout the country that have their own, uh, own uh, databases. Perfect. So we're talking about U S today. Mm -hmm. um, what about the pandemic changing recruiting? We've, we've heard from, certainly from other clients that uh, remote work is more friendly, um, mm -hmm. everybody's remote, but what other things have changed on your end? You know, in-person interviews um, aren't, aren't right. happening now. It's, that's a little, you know, a little disappointing because we, we like that interaction, but mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us work remote to begin with. Um, uh, so, uh, a lot of things have been done online. 
Um, so your managers are now Zoom interviewing everybody. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When when needed. I mean, a lot of times it's it's it depends on what the requ- what the hiring manager requests. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's over the phone. Um, sure. But but it does happen on occasion. Mm-hmm. That's that's really important, and you know, get those uh, those ring lights so that you look good on, on video. <laughs> we had a little conversation about that before we started. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting one: uh, diversity and inclusion, such a hot topic right now, yeah. just in the world of of HR and employment. Um, are you thinking about hiring a diverse workforce as it was, relates to independent contractors? And is this something you're discussing internally? We always, as part of our our experienced hire recruiting uh, process and, and it's it's our that's our always our goal um, it's always something we focus on um, and um, you know, we, we look for folks that that can do the work and mm-hmm. diversity uh, and inclusion is always always part of our recruiting process absolutely and I, I am hearing that not just from KPMG but several other clients um, what's interesting is even at the manager level, you would think that it was coming from HR or legal or something like that um, or procurement, but I've had managers ask us about, you know, can we, um, you know, supply a diverse group of people, you know, to to apply because that's important to them as well. So I think we're going to see even more of that. What's a little different about it with ICs versus employees, um, you've got your EEOC type stuff, you know, in recruiting for full mm-hmm people for independence there's some disadvantaged business you know small business stuff and things like that but but that hasn't become as clear in the recruiting process but I think you'll see that change over the next year or two well that's really wonderful I think we're seeing it then driven more the clients are driving forward the initiative very much they're not having to be asked for it which is so Mm -hmm. wonderful to see that that you guys are taking a lead there um obviously you guys are a first mover in a lot of spaces Mm -hmm. um Similar, sort of tangential to uh, DNI is inclusion around age discrimination. So a lot of people in this uh, chat today seem to have robust, wonderful, long careers, and they're saying, "If I've been doing it 20 years, do I need a title? Should I have taken dates off my resume?" And and I'm hearing from both of you pretty clearly, "No, we want dates, and we want to know it's recent." Is that and, true? Yeah, and this is an independent consulting world. Remember, so. Right. In- to be a consultant, we expect that you have a rich history of, you know, background that um, the clients are going to be able to pull from. Yeah. So right. I understand the question with full-time recruiting, and I think there's been some bias, you know, out there in that world. People are worried about putting, you know, college graduation dates and things like that. I, I actually, I, Vince, I'm interested to see what you think. I, I think in the IC world, we expect that we have people with long careers. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, again, we, we are looking for someone whose background and skill set match what we're looking for. Right. Do you have that background? That's what's important. It's mm-hmm. that's everything else. You know, that, that's the important thing. Um, any judgment? I know we're talking about recency, uh, a couple of questions coming in. You know, I've, I've taken time off to get a degree. I took a couple years off to raise a child, to care mm-hmm. for an aging parent. Um, I've gone back and forth between IC and full-time jobs. Any um, ways to sort of navigate how to sell your experience, even if it's not the most recent? This does happen. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't, personally, when I see gaps like that, that are, that are well explained, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Um, mm-hmm. it, I feel you know, the same way. I, I, I expect I, to see it. You yeah, know? and I sometimes I think I I've mentioned this before. I sometimes I like those candidates better because yes, I know that those people are very eager to get back into the workforce, you know, and their yeah. perception of and attitudes and things like that might even be a little bit better than people who are are, are you know currently in demand across different uh, disciplines. And you know, if you are you know uh, going back and forth between full time and independent contracting, you know, finding, you know, maybe finding an independent contract role that leads to a full time role is is the way to go. And yeah. you know, it, it may help uh, in that in that case. Mm-hmm. That's true. Sometimes you can get as you're reentering the job uh, world from you know some type of hiatus. Sometimes taking a contract role initially will be much easier to get than a full-time one. 
And then that, and what's so crazy is all you need is like six months on your resume of doing something. And then mm -hmm. all workers will be like, okay, they've been working and, you know, so right. maybe in the contract world, it's easier to stick your toe back in the water before full time. Well, and I think statistically, I help run state of independence survey, which we've been doing 10 years. And, and we're seeing increasingly people who choose contract, then they choose a full-time job for a specific reason, they come back and forth. So at least data wise, it's supported that it's pretty standard just to yeah. go between the two. Um, tactical question um, for both of you here. Uh, a person is asking, why we see a posting appear go away and then reappear. Is it because it's talent pooling? Is it because you found somebody <laughs> and it fell through? Do you have the same opportunity? Go ahead, Vince, take it away. <laughs> <on. laughs> I know there's an answer. It's an, another one of those answers. It's all of those. So, so <laughs> we, I mean, honestly, we can receive a request for an opportunity in the morning and by the afternoon for, for many reasons, uh, the practice, the, the hiring team can come back and say, you know what, it fell through. We yeah. don't need it. We filled it or, internally. Yeah, or we found right? somebody internally. Yeah, yeah that's, that we that's didn't a know big was ending on another another project. I don't know. Sometimes I see things posted in error. Sorry, but sometimes it happens. Somebody's like, "Did I open that?" And then they see it at the end of the yeah. Day. It can, <laughs> that has happened. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I yeah. That, um, okay. So I do see a couple of questions about rates. I'm just going to flag that. Um, we did talk a little bit about before the call started that rates are just, they're all over the board for different projects. Um, you know, certainly ICs have the ability to set their rates. So we're, we're not going to touch too much on that because there's a lot of stuff that uh, can happen depending on the project needs. So um, that is one area I'm telling you guys that we won't get to today. Um, but I'm seeing a lot of other questions here about mm -hmm. uh, cover letter. So uh, mm -hmm. Do you still want a cover letter for each role? And should I tweak my resume each time or my, my profile in your system each time I apply to a role? That's, that's a great question. Um, as far as cover letters go, I, 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 I don't think they're necessary. Um, I think a, a good summary at the top of your resume um, that you know, consolidates um, your background is, yes. is enough. Um, yeah, I think I think I don't think you need uh, a cover letter, and I just forgot Another the second question. Another thing for us to read, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and again, you know, there's there's if there's too much to read, you know, I don't need to read a cover letter just to know what's already going to be in your resume, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The second question was, should I tweak the resume, or rather, oh, I think we right. could create a profile in the marketplace. Um, should I tweak that marketplace profile every time I apply, or should I sort of have a master one um, that I work from? That's, you know, in your, in your marketplace profile, have all of the skills listed, okay? Mm -hmm. In your resume, uh, because that's what we present to the team, okay? If, and I'll give you an example. We had someone apply for a role, had a great background, but didn't have a specific skill set mentioned in there, although they did it, right? They, they performed this task and they had great experience in it, but it, it wasn't, that and the software experience that we needed wasn't listed in there. So, mm -hmm. so if you are going for a specific role, yeah, I, I would say depending on, you know, how many different areas that you could work within, mm -hmm. um, have a resume that, that is specific to that. Or if you can easily make it, uh, you know, tweak the resume to make it more, mm -hmm. um, more visible to folks that are recruiters that are, that are searching, absolutely. Perfect. So keep it up. And to it's skills area skills area in marketplace, you know, you can have all of your relevant skills there. You can put in as many as you have. That's not like the resume in that we're going to tell you to cut that down. And we might be doing keyword searches on those, on that skills area too. Mm -hmm. Right. Wonderful. Well, we are just about at time today. So I'm going to ask my always final question, which is, is there anything that you would like to tell us about tips, tricks, and techniques that I did not ask that you'd like to proactively share as your final words of wisdom today, Vince? Hmm. You know, I, I think I, I always go back to this in, in, in my, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing career coaching is, is just be proactive. I mean, that's, that's the best, that's the best way to do it. Um, and, and I think you had mentioned too, I looked at your list of things you told me, forums, Right. There's lots of those. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Active out there. Like, yes. 
Where, uh, whatever it, it is for your skill set. One of the one of the greatest ideas I've I've seen and I've actually utilized for uh, for some side things I've done uh, is participating in forums. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of really good professional forums out there. I'm sure many of you are part of them. When you you go in and you know look for folks that maybe starting are starting out or um, a discussion that you want to chime in on. But at at the bottom in your signature, make sure you you put a link to to your uh, to your website or to your LinkedIn profile. So mm -hmm. people can can actually reach you. Um, mm -hmm. That was something I had done when I was doing uh, in between roles. I was doing some career coaching, so I was you know an independent, and um, and I would go into forums and answer questions and put my information. And that's that's how I brought in some business. Yeah. That's huge. Great. And Great not tip. everybody's name is uh, is is. Vince Valley, you know, not that's a that's an uncommon name. People might be able to Google you. <laughs> Very <laughs> memorable. Less so. um, you can, for better or worse, you can always find me. Um, well, thank you guys so much. This has been wonderful. I appreciate all of you. So many of you stayed on until this very final minute here. Vince, uh, big big thank you for joining us, Amy. My pleasure. Thank you for the third yeah. time in a row, and we will have lots more of these throughout the fall. So thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, soon. guys. Get a recording next week or later this week. Thanks. Thank you. Have Bye. a great day.